so that I don't have to make Jeff run all over the place. All right, friends, welcome to our annual church picnic. It is a joy to be here. It's a joy to lead you in a very brief worship service so that we can get right to the food and fellowship soon thereafter. A few quick announcements before we start our time of worship. Um, one is that we are Zooming and we are recording. Uh, so I'm excited that we can offer that, and I'm grateful to Jeff, who is making that all possible. Someone asked me the other day, how is that even going to work? And I said, I have no idea. He told me he could do it. And I said, great, thanks. That's all I know. <laughs> so I'm grateful for that. Uh, we also are going to hear some announcements about food and trash and where all of that goes so that everyone knows what's going on after worship. So after worship... Hot dogs, hamburgers, and the like are outside where the grill is. There are people that are going to have them nice and grilled up for us. This is going to be the table that has like the food that would go with your meal. And then desserts are down at that end by where Pat's sitting. She's got the best seat in the house near the dessert table. Um, when you're finished with your meal and as you have some trash or recycling that you need to take care of, please put trash in this bin. And recycling over there by Dev. says trash. I know, but we're changing it today. Because there's, this, there's already trash in this one. And so it's easier to separate if we... Okay, so trash in this bin in the corner. Trash here. Recycling here. Got it? Fabulous. Um, it's a carry-in, carry-out facility, so we need to make sure that we take care of all of our trash and recycling. Please try to keep it just to these two bins. I don't know if there are other bins scattered around, but it helps us if we only have two bags that we need to carry out. So, trash there, recycling there, dinner there, dessert there. There we go. All right, one other announcement, and this is one I'm excited about. I get to introduce a new staff member to you this morning. So over the summer, we went through a hiring process to hire a nursery care attendant to take care of children like my Caleb and Jess Lincoln when he's here, the little, little ones. Um, we collected about 20 some odd applications from Indeed.com. I read through them all. We selected our top several candidates. And the one who turned out to be our absolute favorite candidate agreed to take the job. So I get to introduce you to her this morning. Um, Sarah, I'm going to have you come so they can see your lovely face. This is Sarah. <laughs> Say hi, Sarah. Um, so when you see Sarah hanging out with the kids, it's because we're paying her to do that, and I'm so glad that she's willing to do that. Um, so thank you for welcoming her. She'll be here for the picnic. Um, if you want, you can go back out to okay. the playground. And well, thank you for having me, more. and enjoy your service. <laughs> All right. I think that's it for announcements. Pausing in case I'm wrong. Fabulous. All right. We're going to start our time of worship together then with the opening prayer, which is responsive. So I'll invite you to turn to your bulletin for that. We give you thanks, O Lord. We call on your name. We'll sing to you. We'll sing praises to you. We glory in your holy name. Let hearts of those who seek you rejoice. We seek you, Lord, and your strength. And your presence continually. We remember the wonderful works you have done, your miracles, and the judgments you uttered. You are the Lord our God. Your judgments are all the earth. Amen and amen. Let's stand as we're able to join in song.
Amen. Please be seated. We'll sing the next two verses later, don't worry. Our scripture reading this morning is Psalm 103, verses 1 through 13. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. This is a message from God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, I want to start by telling a story from when I was in college. I went to college at Grove City College, which is a small Christian sort of Presbyterian college in western Pennsylvania. It's like halfway between Erie and Pittsburgh. And faith is a very important part of the identity of students on that campus and of the faculty as well. It's not uncommon for there to be prayers in your calculus class or, or whatever. You know, it's just a very pervasive part of the life of the school. And so a lot of the surrounding churches knew that there were a few thousand college students who would be looking for churches to attend and so found different ways to make their services available. Seven of them were within walking distance of the campus, and the ones that weren't would send vans or buses to the campus and pick up students at designated places on campus at designated times and take them to worship. And one of the things I loved about that was that I got to kind of try out different flavors of church. I had grown up in the United Methodist Church. We started attending there when I was five, and it was all I had ever known as far as church goes. It was my parents' church, my grandmother's church. It was my childhood's second home in a lot of ways. And so to try out different iterations of church was really a rich experience. So one Sunday, a couple of my friends and I decided to go to a church that was a little bit further away. It was probably about a 20 or 30 minute drive from campus. And we walked in, and there was already music pumping, and it was loud, and it was fast, and it was exciting, and the number of women who just like folded me into their bodies in these big hugs it was just immeasurable, and there was, there was so much just joy and life in that place. And it, it was unsettling at first, because it was very unfamiliar to me. What I was familiar with was what you all experience on a typical Sunday morning on Main Street, right? So, so it was very unfamiliar to me. They were dancing in the aisles and singing, and there wasn't a bulletin because things just happened as the Spirit moved. And um, when it came time for the sermon, I thought, all right, this is the sermon. We're at least halfway, probably two-thirds of the way through the service. The sermon itself, friends, was 90 minutes long. <laughs> I'm not going to do that this morning. Let me be abundantly clear. When I left, gosh, I was hungry. I had not planned on being at church for three hours and had not had a big enough breakfast for that. So I was hungry physically, but oh my gosh, I was so full spiritually. The only word I could think of that incorporated all that I experienced there was joy. It was just pure joy. Now fast forward to last Thursday. Last Thursday, a few days ago, I was attending a Zoom-based Bible study that I signed up for with a different church. Again, I still like to expose myself to different theologies and different ideologies sometimes. It sharpens my own faith to do so. 
So I'm attending this Christian Bible study, and we finished the study. It's very academic and very, like, scripture-based and very just kind of book-oriented. We get done with the study. We pray the Lord's Prayer. And then the, the host of the Bible study says, all right, now everyone give glory to God, and starts applauding. And it was so out of character for the rest of the study that it startled me. But again, there was joy there. And the joy was effervescent, even on Zoom, even through the camera. And so it got me thinking about what true joy in the Lord means. Now, it doesn't always mean clapping or dancing or singing or preaching for 90 minutes, thanks be to Jesus. Um, but joy is something that's an integral part of our Christian experience. And it's something the scriptures reference over and over and over and over and over again. And so it's important to talk about sometimes. Today is a day that's all about joy. We're going to experience the joy of good food. We're going to experience the joy of fellowship. We'll experience the joy of music, the joy of hearing the scriptures, the joy of nature and the beauty thereof. But really all of these things come back to the same source, don't they? All of these are gifts from God. And so as we go through our celebration, as we have more smiles and more laughter than we might on a typical Sunday morning, as we enjoy more food than we might on a typical Sunday morning, let's not lose track of where all that goodness and all that joy emanates from. See, the things of this world are fickle, even things like food and fellowship and even the natural world can be fickle. We know this from all of the storms that have caused harm in places around the world all summer long. But God is not fickle. God is steady. God is unchanging. And God is the author of our joy, regardless of what's happening in the world around me. I've had people say to me, Pastor, you have no idea how hard my life has been. Joy is not possible. And my answer would be, friend, I love you dearly. Joy is not about what's happening in your life. Joy is about who God is and who God is for you. Friends, God loves us always, no matter what. This sounds like such a Sunday school thing to say that I don't think we say it often enough in church. God loves you always, no matter what. God loves me always, no matter what. And so regardless of what's happening in this earthly life, there is joy. There is joy available for all who trust in the Lord. There is joy available for all who lean on God, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And for that, I celebrate. Amen. Amen. Would you stand as you're able to join in singing? And while we do so, we're going to do double duty. We're going to sing our hymn and pass our offering basket at the same time. You can do this, friends. We're going to sing and pass a basket at the same time. <laughs>
Amen. Please be seated as we join in a moment of prayer. God, we praise you, for you are awesome and mighty and perfect and powerful and so good. We praise you, O oh God, for you are love, and you teach us how to love. We praise you, O oh God, for you are the author of all our joy. We confess, O oh God, that sometimes we forget that joy is theirs for the celebrating. We forget that your love is always and forever available to us no matter what. And we forget to return that love to you and to those around us. Forgive us, we pray. Free us that we might truly joyfully serve you in all we do, think, and say. God, we give you thanks for all of the blessings you've given us, for the things that communicate your love for us. We give you thanks for the food that we'll, we'll share in a moment, for the fellowship in this space, for the beauty that surrounds us, for the joy that fills us. We give you thanks for the abundance with which you have blessed us, and we pray that as we give back a bit of that which you've given to us, that you would bless these gifts. Make them be like loaves and fish, that they might multiply your witness in the world, so that all would celebrate your joy. God, we know that while joy is because of who you are, it's also more difficult to find when the world around us is bearing down on us. And so we pray this moment for a lightening of the spirits of all those in need. We pray for healing for those who are ill or injured, in mind, in body, or in spirit. We pray for peace for those who are grieving, for protection for those who are living in fear or in violence. We pray for provision for those living in poverty or in scarcity. And for freedom for all who are addicted, imprisoned, and oppressed. We pray, O oh God, for a removal of all the things which would keep us and all your people from fully experiencing your joy all day, every day. And we ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Friends, we'll go ahead and stand as we're able to sing one more time, and then I'll pray a blessing on your day and on our meal. the joy of the Lord that permeates our hearts and souls, and may you be blessed by this food that we're about to receive as we bless all of those who have prepared it. Amen. Amen. Help yourselves. Enjoy the music.